All right, we can just have a seat. We'll get rolling here. All right, before we get started, before I open with prayer, um, you have to look around and introduce yourself to someone that you do not know right now. Like you have not met them before. Maybe you have to stand up. But you got to say hi to someone that you don't know. All right, cool. All right, let's do it. Thank you. There, now you, you have a new friend. Just like we want for middle school, a new friend. Uh, let, me, uh, let me open us in prayer, and then, uh, then we'll get rolling. All right, bow your heads with me, please. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thanks for this, uh, for this evening. Thanks for gathering us here. Um, we just uh, pray that this is just an honor and a glory to you tonight, that we lift your name high tonight. Uh, Lord, that we just have an opportunity to get to know one another, that we have an opportunity to share uh, what we just love uh, about specifically the middle school. And then even more specifically, sixth grade. And uh, Lord, I just pray for each one of these families as they transition uh, a student into middle school. It's, it's a unique experience, uh, but it's an awesome experience. I just pray that you walk this path, this journey uh, with them, with us, uh, with our staff, um, again, with the, with the families and the students and uh, the path that you have laid before them is perfect because you created it. And uh, Lord, just help us to follow that path as best we can. Thank you again for bringing us together here tonight. In your name we pray, amen. All right, so a little bit about me. So I, let's see, I think that's the... Can I go back, Brent? Oh, yeah, okay. A little bit of a delay. Brandon, how are we doing here? Oh, there we go. Okay, a little bit about me. Just so, for, for those of you who don't know, so I've been in education for about 30 years. I have a master's in ed. I have a doctorate in educational leadership, and I'm a licensed principal in the state of Colorado. And I love to uh, ride my bike, go for runs, camp, read. That's kind of my thing. My wife, we've been married 31 years. Uh, she is a school psychologist uh, at an alternative high school uh, in Douglas County. I have two kids. Uh, both are K-12 through Denver Christian. My son is currently a PhD student in organic chemistry at DU. And my daughter is finishing her senior year uh, at Trinity Christian College in Chicago. Uh, she's studying nursing. Uh, she played soccer there um, and was team chaplain uh, for her last three years there. It was great. She's going to go. Um, this is how I know I raised a smart child. She's going to go live with my mom and dad on the beach in San Diego and be a nurse in San Diego. So smart move, smart move. So we're kind of a flyover state for her right now. Our goal tonight um, is to kind of give you a sense of, of our middle school and just the differences between what, a, um, what an elementary experience might look like and then what we're offering at the middle school. Uh, for some of you, this is, this is all brand new. This is going to be all brand new. And then for some of you, you have, there's an older student, right? So you've experienced some of this. So we're going to start out, um, again, just kind of with an overview. We're going to talk about 
the performing arts. So Mrs. Last is going to be up here. We're going to talk about faith formation in chapel. And Chaplain Frankie's going to come up for a couple of minutes. We're going to talk about athletics. Uh, and Mr. Hansen will come up. He's our athletic director. He'll come up and share uh, a little bit about the athletic program because all that starts in sixth grade. That all fires up. All our sports that we offer for eighth grade, we offer those sports for sixth grade as well. Uh, and similar to performing arts, then, of course, we have chapel together right here in these seats. So that's kind of what we want. And then we're going to send the students off, and we're going to give them kind of a it, even if you go here, you don't spend a lot of time on the third floor as a fifth grader. So you're going to spend some time up. Our teachers are here. Many of our sixth grade teachers are here. Um, our specials teachers are here. And you're going to kind of have a scavenger hunt because um, you're going to have a different art room and a different math room and a different, right? So you're going to have that experience. And then um, all the adults, you're going to stay here with me. And we'll kind of get into a little bit more of the weeds of, of the differences between um, elementary and middle. Okay? So three things. This is, this is kind of, this is deep in my soul. There's three things that our middle school students are seeking. Identity, purpose, and belonging. And that really comes out in middle school, Right? Their bodies and brains are doing backflips. They're going bananas. Um, and it, all of a sudden, it kind of becomes real, right? All of a sudden, it's, there's, there's wondering, and where do I fit? Where's my friend group? Maybe it's not the same friend group as last year. Maybe it's a completely different friend group. Um, where is my true identity? We want that to be in Christ, right? We want that to be in Christ. And then purpose, why am I here? Right? They're wondering that. They're seeking that. They're going to ask a ton of questions about that. Like, what do I want to do when I grow up? And it's going to change, right? As they get exposed to different things and discover different things. So what's, what's the purpose? And then belonging. Everybody, you, me, we love belonging. We seek belonging. I find my place here. This is my, right? So You'll see that at recess, students sort of seeking their belonging. You'll see it in the halls, just walking up and down the halls. Where do I belong? Where do I fit? So those are really three things that um, are really important. So Chaplain Frank here, where are you? Yeah, come on down. Okay, so, yep, Chaplain Frankie. So um, he's going to share a little bit about what, his kind of vision for chapel and what it's like. So again, this is something that's new for sixth grade. Other faith formation pieces besides chapel, we have Bible classes. Uh, we have morning devotions. They're often student-led. And we just have organic conversations about faith, things that just flow naturally out of a conversation. It could be a teacher just walking down the hall for 10 seconds with a student. And those really organic, interesting conversations can be really meaningful, even though they're just short, right? Just short, brief interactions. They can be really, really meaningful, okay? And then, of course, on Thursdays, we have Chaplain Frankie, so I asked him to come up and just share a little bit about chapel. Awesome. Thank you so <laughs> So we have an agreement. He's, so I sent him a message. I said, you have three dash five minutes. He said he did not see the dash. So he thinks he has 35 minutes. So it's three-ish. Okay. All right, three-ish. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so I begin every time I speak with a 23-minute uh, prayer, so please bow your heads with me. No? Okay. Um, so faith formation, middle school. Here we go, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. This is when, um, you know, Dr. Amadon really set it up. This is when our youth really began to ask the questions. They began to look for themselves. They really began, there's a different level of faith formation at this level. Um, and I have spent close to 20 years trying to figure out creative ways, innovative ways, any way God would lead me to how do I reach our youth um, with this, and this has really been my life's mission. So um, he spoke about it a little bit on Thursdays. Um, we have chapel here, and chapel probably for the kids who've been here, maybe you can ask them, but chapel probably looks a little different um, than most people probably expect. Um, I don't think God is boring. I don't think God is dead. 
I believe God is alive. I believe God is the most interesting thing we can ever talk about. So I try to bring, yeah, amen. So we try to bring him um, to a place to where kids can see him. And, and everything that we preach or teach, it needs to be applicable to a 6th, 7th, and 8th grader. If not, over their head and they can check a box and say they had chapel that day, but they're not getting anything, right? So why is all this important? Um, I got like two minutes left, right? Why is this, why is this important? Um, Proverbs 22, 6, right? Train a child up in the way they ought to go so when they grow older, they won't depart from it. Do you realize that anywhere you send your kid to school, you're not only partnering with that school academically, you're also partnering with that school with the faith formation of your child. Most of your children are going to be in school eight hours a day, close to eight hours a day, five days a week. That's 40, uh, uh, four weeks in a month. I, I'm not a math teacher, but I think that's, that's, that's around like 160 hours. You are allowing wherever you send your kid to help that formation be formed, to help that child be raised up. It's not just what happens in the home. That's why we take what we do here very seriously. So we do things like um, reenactments. I have music going. We have the lights going. Any way where we can try to make sure that the kids can see God for themselves. Again, this is when they start asking that question, who is God? Who does he mean to me? How does he affect my life? And what does that mean for my life? And how can I, how can I express him throughout my day. So I have a wonderful time working with your youth. I have a wonderful time. Um, I keep my door open. I keep my, my office door open for questions because I believe we have to be able to at least stand in position to attempt to answer these questions. Who is God? What does this mean? What does this mean? And I let the kids drill me. We have a great time with it, right? I don't claim to know everything because I'm not Jesus. I just work for him, right? But it's important that we allow our kids to ask these questions, to find out what they're looking for, because if we don't answer them, then you're leaving it up to Google, you're leaving it up to YouTube, and you don't know what teacher or what person or what theology your child is receiving these answers from. So this is such an exciting time. I'm excited to partner with you and your children. Um, that also means that I'm, I'm available to you as parents. If you have a question, um, I send out what we call Chaplain Corners every week um, that I do a sermon, and it just kind of goes over what I preached about, what I talked about, um, a question that might help you do a devotion at home, those type of things. So um, I'll be around for a little bit. If you have any questions, I believe that's my time. I'm not going to look because I know I'm over time. When you're over time, never look. <laughs> so I'm going to get off here, but thank you so much. God bless you all, and welcome to D.C. Two things that he's amazing at, with, along with a lot of other things. One is when the students come in, their emotions are moved, right? Their emotions are moved. And if you can move emotions, you can do a lot with that, right? The other thing is he gets them curious and wondering, and right? So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty powerful. So there's also the physical piece, right? So we want them to move. And as they get sort of into that early adolescent, they really need to move. So, for example, uh, you'll see that bottom at recess. Unless it's a driving rain or it's like 700 degrees below zero, we are going outside because 245 middle school students inside at recess is a combustible situation, and we try and avoid that at all costs. So we get them out for recess. The other thing that I do is I allow, I allow snowball fights. So you might have heard about those. So... I have a designated area. I, I'm outside with my bullhorn that can shoot uh, my voice 1,200 feet. And I police the snowball station. It's a blast, and it's so healthy. It is so healthy. It's so much fun to watch. So um, they kind of police themselves. It's a fantastic experience. And then, of course, we have PE class with Mr. Jones up there, so you'll have that. Uh, and then we have strength conditioning, which he also helps run with Coach Shane Miller. And our students, they, it's an elective, but our students also come in a couple days a week in the morning before school. There are students that are so dedicated, they come in for about an hour before school and they do full-on strength conditioning with, with uh, Coach Shane Miller. And uh, it's really cool. I think there's about 45 to 50 middle school students in the group now that come uh, to school every week. Along with the physical is, um, is our athletics, right? So those start in sixth grade. This is Mr. Hansen. He runs our middle school program. And so he's going to share for 
three-ish minutes, okay. you're down two because Frankie used four and a half. Okay. So you get three-ish minutes. All right. God can get more time than sports. That's okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Mr. Hansen. First question, how many of you got kids in the audience? How many of you guys play sports? Raise your hand. That's amazing. Uh, I grew up playing sports. Uh, D.C. is a very awesome place for those of you that want to try a new sport. We encourage you to do that. Uh, this past fall, we had close to 90% of our middle school students participated in one of our fall sports, uh, which is amazing. So we want kids that play club sports, the opportunity to play sports at D.C. with their friends. So if you play a club sport in any of these sports that we offer, uh, we will work with you to make sure that you get the opportunity to do that as well as playing at D.C. Uh, for us, all of our sports programs that you see over here, um, we're no longer a middle school sports program and a high school sports program. We are a full Denver Christian sports program. So all of our high school varsity coaches help hire our middle school coaches. They help create uh, practice plans or like a learning tier for our middle school kids. So for instance, uh, in boys' soccer, our varsity coaches will say, in sixth grade, we want these kiddos to learn these three drills and these three plays. And then in seventh grade, they'll know that and the stuff from sixth grade. And then in eighth grade, they'll know that and all of the extra stuff. So then when you're, you guys get to freshman year, which is going to happen like that, and you go to step onto the field or the court, you already know what to expect, and it's not a big of a learning curve uh, for you. So some things that are new for middle schoolers when it comes to uh, sports is transportation. So uh, you guys get to get out of class early, uh, sometimes to leave to road games. We'll provide transportation to you. Uh, parents, you need to pick them up from those road games and most of the time. Um, but with that privilege comes uh, responsibility. So you are student athletes first, and we check uh, grade guardian and your grades and also your behavior in the hallway uh, and how you conduct yourself because when you play sports at Denver Christian, everybody knows that you do it, so you have to represent not only yourself, your family, but school and God in the best way possible, and I take that very seriously. So um, that's some of the fun stuff that you'll get to do uh, when you get here, uh, all the sports that you see that we offer, um, we provide registration dates for you guys to do that uh, pretty early uh, in the season. And then we'll give you information uh, right before the season on what practices and things like that work, look like. We try to get the kids to have three to four contacts a week when it comes to the sports that they're um, playing. So that way you guys can get used to what it's going to be like when you're going five days a week uh, for high school. And we also want to make sure that those kids that also want to do like theater programs, that stuff is very important to me as well. So you have a well-rounded child. So if you want to participate in a sport, but you also want to do something with our amazing performing arts program, we will work that out between uh, the two as well. So um, I will be around. If you have any questions, um, come on down and say hello. Yeah, so um, the middle school progr program is awesome. So my kids played sports um, all through D.C., middle school included, of course. And they they did have a couple of club um, connections outside, right? So they played club sports outside of D.C., but again, they, the D.C. worked. And I tell you, playing club was great, but there is nothing like playing for your school. Like when you're walking up and down the halls of game day, and it just feels different. So the next piece um, is creative. So creative is all kinds of things. There's a whole STEM piece for creativity. There's uh, performing arts. So we're going to talk about that with Mrs. Lass in just a little bit. So one of the things that we try and do is offer as many creative places as possible. So one of them is through our electives. Those meet a couple of days a week, and they rotate every quarter. So they get, a, they get four different electives. This is outside their specials, which is outside Spanish, outside PE, outside art. So these are electives, OK? So they get an opportunity to rotate through these electives. Uh, STEM class is one of them. Uh, and then all these things. You're up, Mrs. Last. 
So modern art appreciation, drumline, jazz, piano, there's a drama elective, intro to AVL with Brandon King. So you, like, we have students that run all the light and sound for all our chapels, okay? Um, digital scrapbooking, hand lettering, which is kind of like calligraphy. So we, pr we try and provide as many opportunities for them to be as creative in as many ways as possible. So Mrs. Last is gonna come up and share a little bit about what that looks like in the middle school. Hi everyone, um, welcome. My name is Jen Last and I am one of the elementary music teachers here. So I'll, I know a lot of you in here and it's kind of, hi everybody. It's kind of crazy to me that this group's um, going into middle school. So if I'm feeling this way, I can't imagine how the parents are feeling, but I'm so excited for you guys. It's been cool to see you grow up from kindergarten all the way um, to this moment. So this is a very exciting time. For those of you that are new to DC, welcome. We are excited for you to join our family. We are one big family, and especially in performing arts, we do a ton in elementary, a ton in middle school, a ton in high school, similar to what Mr. Hansen was saying, and it just kind of, we're one big family here, um, not only as a school, but in our departments as well, because we see a lot of benefit to our older uh, performers um, and musicians pouring into our younger and things like that. So um, some of the things um, in middle school, it's going to look a little different than elementary school. So we have a lot more options for you, which is wonderful. Um, so these are things up here. Most of these are done during the day, during the day. So we've got choir with Miss Nacarado. Some of you may know who she is. We have band with Miss Del Nero. Now here's the cool part. You can do both. So a lot of kids don't want to quit band, and I, I don't think you should, but if you're like, I really want to sing too, we work it out. So you can do both band and choir. Um, we have the piano lab with Miss Nacarado. That's an elective. That's um, in addition to choir or band. Uh, we've got drum line. We've got the jazz band. We've got, uh, and that's an elective. We have a drama class. And what's neat about the drama class is you don't audition. You just sign up for the class and everybody is part of the production. So we still will figure out parts and things like that, but everyone gets to be part of that. So that's a really neat thing for kids who want to try drama. And that's not singing, that's just acting. Right now the middle school is putting on um, Alice in Wonderland. So um, if you would like to come to that, let me know and I can get you a free ticket as a middle school excited person coming to check it out. Happy to give you a free ticket for that. Because those are going to be, that could be you next year. So if you love to act, um, it's such a fun thing. Um, we've got the musical after school. And that is something that you audition for. So not everyone necessarily gets a role in that. That's kind of our one big competitive thing that we do. Um, and then we have orchestra club, which is after school. We also have general music. Uh, we we kind of have, we just have a lot of options. General music isn't necessarily a performance class, but we're kind of looking at different options for next year, what that's gonna look like. But as you can see, there's just many opportunities here. So yeah, um, if you have any questions, I'll be around. Welcome. Whoa, boy that, okay. Um, okay, so the last thing before we send the students off, Brandon, I'm getting kind of hit and miss on this, but next one. Yeah, let's do that, keep one more. Cool, thanks, okay. So in, in middle school we do, we do three trips. Um, each grade does its own trip. They all happen uh, during this week, so that 18th is actually Wednesday. Um, so the, the sixth grade trip is Estes Park um, and Rocky Mountain National Park. So they go up there for three days. It's an overnight trip. And it's, it's a really neat experience. The, part of the goals for this trip, Brand, you can go to the next one. Part of the goals for, the, for this trip are, one is you have a lot of brand new to Denver Christian sixth graders. So there's a, there's a large number of those. And so when you're going right out of the gates to go spend some time in God's country in the spectacular mountains in Estes Park, it's a wonderful way to immediately spend some quality time with your classmates, your brand new classmates. And for the students that are returning, you're meeting all these brand new friends, right? All these new students. So it's a real mix. It's a, it's a fantastic opportunity, like I said, to, to go right out of the gates. 
Um, seventh grade goes to Camp Idrahaji for four days, and eighth grade goes to the Black Hills in South Dakota for five days, okay? So here's, this is basically the goal. So we're trying to build, do some team building, build some relationships, do some reflection, have a good time, be silly, uh, and just hang out together, right, in a real uh, meaningful way. So next one, Brandon. So it's put on by Simply Venture. So Simply Venture, they run our sixth grade trip and our eighth grade trip. They're a, they're a neat Christian organization. They do some of our high school trips as well. Uh, they help organize those during Discovery Week. Um, I don't know if they do some of our international trips, but they, they do some different trips for our high school. So uh, they're a wonderful, wonderful uh, partner with us, and, and they're deeply faithful people, and so they, they have that, those similar values, so it's really special. Um, yeah, so there's no technology of any kind whatsoever on the trip. Um, yeah, yeah, the teachers are excited about that too. So um, my encouragement is these. Start praying about the trip now. For some of us, it's our first overnight trip. It just is. It's okay. Um, it's brand new. And for some, it's not, right? Going on an overnight trip is, is something they've done many, many times and whatever. And so you've got the whole range of experiences in terms of traveling uh, overnight, okay? Pray for the new students, right? So if, pray for the, so our current uh, fifth grade Denver Christian families, pray for these new families that are entering that this trip, and it's not too early to start praying, by the way, Pray that this trip really allows them to solidify their spot in this community, that they feel like this is their school right away. Like, we really, really want that. And so that's why this trip is at the very beginning. It does cost some dollars. My encouragement is always to have the students raise their own dollars because it it's their trip, right? It's, they own the trip. There's, there's an investment from them into the trip, and it will, I promise you, it will make the trip better. I've been doing these trips for about 25 years. When the student has to pay, it feels different. Like, it, it, there's an ownership piece. There's, it's just, it's a different feel. You just got to trust me on that one. Okay, next. Okay, so um, students, you're going to head up that direction, so you're going to get connected with the staff, and you're going to go on your scavenger hunt, All right, if you don't know someone's name, kiddos, ask someone. Ask them their name. Hi, my name is, what is your name? Repeat after me. Cool. So what they're gonna go do is, they're gonna go spend some time down in the middle school. So again, I said it kind of at the beginning, even though you have a student who's a current fifth grader here, they have spent little to no time down in the middle school. I mean, they, they come up and they're like, they just, they didn't even know we existed until all of a sudden they're like wandering through and there's like these six, four, eighth graders and they're like, whoa, what planet have I landed on? And, um, and so anyway, they're going to, familiarity kind of breeds confidence, right? So get them a little bit, nerves go from here to here. And then in August, we have uh, a new student orientation day for just all of sixth grade, brand new seventh and brand new eighth to Denver Christian. And I mean all of six, not just brand new to Denver Christian, but all of six. So those times, just at, like those little drops, my wife and I, we say it's kind of building layers, right? So we're gonna try and give them as much familiarity. I go down, uh, like at the end of April, and I grab each homeroom, and they spend about a half an hour with me, and I give them a tour, and we, I, I give them a tour of all the middle school classes, and I answer their questions, but again, it's just another layer of familiarity um, that helps. And by the way, within a few days, I have no idea, unless I taught their sibling, I have no idea if they are brand new to Denver Christian or if or if they were here in fifth grade, I, have no, I, have, I just have no idea. Like, I couldn't tell you um, 
the students now, I have no clue, which is, which is good. That's what you want. You want that familiarity and that confidence. All right, so we're a school, right? So we, we have this cognitive development piece. And so we have these core classes, math, science, English, and social studies. In sixth grade, it's, it looks, it's world history. Seventh grade, it's geography. Eighth grade, it's US history. So with the math, I, I get questions about math all the time. So I'm going to try and answer it um, as clearly, but also as briefly, right? We could be here all night talking about math. So I taught math here in the middle school for about 10 years. So, and I taught all the grade levels. I taught six through algebra one here in the middle school. We, we do two different ways of differentiation. And this is, there's as much art as there is science to this. And you'll, you'll get what I mean in just a second. So we use map data. We use their in-class assessments. With fifth grade, we lean heavily on the fifth grade recommendations because we're not teaching them, right? They're in the class with them every single day. So we sit down, and we've already started these conversations. We sit down with the fifth grade teachers, or we read recommendations from the incoming fifth graders, like from their other school. We sit down that with that. We have, again, their, either their entrance testing map data or their map data from us that they took with us in the, they just took them, and then they're gonna take them again in the spring. And we go through that, and there's work habits are in there, uh, ability to work independently, like there's different layers that we kind of put over this matrix, and we put them in the best place possible. We want them to be challenged, um, but not like over their head challenge, like drowning challenge, that's, that's just not a positive experience, okay? So we do that, we differentiate within the classroom, but we also differentiate by moving the students up a grade if we have to. So currently, I have some sixth graders that are in sixth grade math, I have some that are in seventh grade math, and I have some that are in pre-algebra. I have some seventh graders that are in seventh grade math, I have some seventh graders that are in pre-algebra, I have some seventh graders that are in algebra one, and I have some seventh graders that go to our high school for geometry, okay? So that's the range that we're dealing with, all right? Uh, same with eighth grade. I've got eighth graders in pre-algebra, algebra one, and over in the high school for geometry, okay? So again, there's as much art as it is science. Because some students, like cognitively, like their ability, their capacity in math is there. Their executive functioning, their ability to stay organized, stay on task, not lose their papers, read their handwriting, like all of that is not at the level. So that requires a different conversation, right? It's like, yes, I get it that your capacity is there, but we've got some other skills that we need to shore up to support that capacity. Does that make sense? You with me on that? Um, and then the reverse, right? So your map and your assessments are, ah, but man, you are so organized, you work hard, you grind, you ask questions, you self-advocate, all of that, yeah, let's, let's push, let's nudge up, right? So it's, that's kind of the art side of it. But I get that question all the time. How do, you, how do we differentiate math? And unfortunately, many, many of us sort of equate where my student is in math to like who they are. You know what I mean? Seriously, I, again, I've taught this forever. There's a, the, we, some we, we try and draw a straight line. Really good at math. Boy, they must be a really good student. It, that's just, that's not, it's not linear. It's not linear, okay? There's, there's, that's the art side that we have to figure out together, us partnering with, with our teachers, okay? Is that kind of, the reason I spend a lot of time on math is because I get that question all the time. So hopefully that gives some clarity, all right? Um, final thing on math. We don't track, so every student is reassessed every single year. So because our bodies and brains are going bananas, we have to allow for the light to go on in seventh grade. Like if I just say, oh, sixth grade, his, um, it, it looks like a bomb went off in a Staples store in their bag, and there's papers strewn everywhere in sixth grade, but something clicks because that's where they are developmentally, 
And they start to kind of figure it out, and there's a motivation there, and oh my goodness, I'm seeing the connection between my organization and my outcomes. They need to be, uh, they need to be allowed to test up, right? And let's go. Like, I'm ready. Like, something has clicked in my brain, at least today, and I'm going, right? So we test and we reassess every single student we don't track. So we have some students that they were accelerated and their brain turned to mashed potatoes, which is totally developmentally appropriate, and they, that will, they'll end up taking pre-algebra again because they're just not ready. That's okay. It's okay. Right? We have some students that, that take algebra one as an eighth grader, and it just, right, we just blew a tire. They're going to take it again in high school. That just has to be okay. They have to, and algebra one is like the center of the wheel, right? So they have to be able to do that, right? Because we want them to launch successfully. You with me on that? Cool? Okay. Uh, specials. So Spanish, PE, uh, art, digital literacy, and keyboarding. So in sixth grade, we teach them di digital literacy um, for a number of, of reasons. One is our students are really good at technology, but that doesn't need, mean they're necessarily good at learning using technology. Those are two different things, right? They can... They can level up on every game they play, right? And they can be amazing videos and watch hours of YouTube shorts without their brain falling out. They can do all that, but when it comes to learning and organizing my Google Drive and writing an appropriate email and organizing my files, they sometimes fall short. They don't have that skill, right? Email is brand new to them in sixth grade. They, they don't have access to their email in elementary, it's turned on for us. So they have access. Well, that's a whole new thing now for some, right? So we teach them that. Uh, next, please. So electives. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, so tracking students. So Mike Hansen mentioned Grey Guardian. Grey Guardian is something, it's a tool that we use um, that has an algorithm that reads Canvas. Canvas is our learning management system. Okay, it's our learning management system. It's where things are uh, uploaded into, assignments are posted there, and different things like that. But Grade Guardian is a tool that, that takes grades, missing assignments, and things like that, and creates a score. Now think golf. Lower is better. Hey, I got 100. That is not good in Grade Guardian. Okay, we want zero, literally. We want a zero. 100... You are, it turns red. You're literally redlining. And that's a flare that goes up in the air that sets off all kinds of bells and whistles for us that says you need help. You need support. And we, we, we look at it every single day. And so we'll pull a student out of a study hall. We'll pull a student out of an elective like, bud, I know that that elective is really cool, but let's shore this up today for 45 minutes. Let's get a couple of these missing assignments. Let's go through your backpack and try and find them because they might be done. That happens all the time. They did the assignment, but they have no idea where it is because they put their math paper in their social studies folder, right? So there's the, and then there, we talk about some executive functioning things in our Grey Guardian elective. It's not really an elective. It's a, it's a voluntold kind of a situation. So this is a great tool, and it reads all our students and it, and it updates overnight, every single night. It's, it's a very helpful tool for us to keep track of students that are shooting up academic red flares. Okay? Uh, next. So transitioning, transitioning into middle school, uh, is a, it's a transition that is, it's as far as the east is from the west in terms of our students' abilities to, to pull it off. Some students, they arrive and they just, the train is just going down the tracks and they're just killing it. Like, they're just, boom, here we go. Like, I'm, I'm organized, I'm good, right? I'm just there. And, and then you have those that are not that, okay? They're just not that. And then you have the whole range in between, right? You have the whole range in between. Like, you look at their folder and their system and you're like, how do you find everything? And they're like, I know exactly where everything is. I'm good. So we think that's a good, that's okay short term, long term, that's not going to work, right? So we try and help with that. So again, the range is here to here. So bridge, bridge, its purpose 
is to help with that transition. It's a bridge from fifth to sixth grade. Canvas is brand new to them, right? It's brand new to some of you. If this is your oldest, it is brand new to you, okay? You are classified as an observer. There's a learning curve to that, to being an observer, okay? So we teach you how to do that, all right? That's kind of our partnership with you. Um, we often, we encourage, and some students will make them, they have to use a planner, like we make them do it, right? There's a, there's a practice there. My son has used, so my son's 23, he has used the same app on his phone since fifth grade to manage his studies. It's called iStudies Pro. It's literally the same one he's used since fifth grade. Okay? The beauty of when my son and daughter were in middle school, this Snapchat nonsense, none of it existed. It was great. All they did was text. It was super cool. Anyway, we're going to talk about that in a minute because I have my opinion on that. So my daughter, also super organized, she just uses a comp book. It's just lined paper. She just uses the next page. So she, that's her system. Right? You, you need a system. System can't be, I hope I can find my assignments tomorrow. That is not a system, okay? That is not a system. So we help with that. Um, the other thing is, if our students are not, if they're not socially, emotionally supported and encouraged and walked, all of this doesn't matter. It just doesn't. It does not matter. If they are struggling with their identity, purpose, and belonging, math doesn't matter. Spanish doesn't matter. It just doesn't. And we put a lot of horsepower in the social emotional side of our kids. We have a full-time counselor. Her name is Tara Cater. She's amazing, right? So we, we spend a lot of time on trying to help them because their emotions, I'm not sure if you noticed, they're like literally a cell deep right? And they can laugh and cry like within a second, right? So we, we've got to help them manage that so that this cognitive stuff can happen and, and be done well, okay? Health and wellness, we get them out moving. I've, told, I've talked about that. Chromebooks, your student's going to arrive. We're going to hand them a Chromebook, okay? We're going to hand them a school-managed Chromebook, they're designed to be really, really durable, and they are. They're, I mean, it feels like you can run a tank over them, and they'll be fine. A tank does not compare to how a middle school treats a laptop. Like, that's not even in the same conversation. And so we have a whole plan for that, um, for when, not if, but when. Um, like, they're walking around. It's a $350 laptop, and they're walking around, like, on the corner, and they go around, and then, like, their buddy drops it out of their hand, and you're like, yeah, that kind of makes sense. I can see how that happened, right? So that kind of thing. Or it's in their backpack, and they're so pumped to go outside for recess. The backpack goes like that and goes, boom, up against the wall, and you've got this laptop, and you're like, yeah, that's a new screen. $25, $50 fee, 75 bucks, son, you're paying for it. They're paying for it, by the way. You have to make them pay for it. So we're gonna, we give them that. Okay, a couple of things. We have a HAPARA management system. So we have two things. So we have to abide by the Child Internet Protection Act. So we have to keep them safe inside the sandbox. How we do that is two things. One is over the entire Denver Christian Network, whether it's my account or a student's account, is IBOSS. It's a filter. It's kind of an initial filter. Okay, number two, and it turns on um, with 6 through 12, it's called Gaggle, okay? Gaggle reads every single email, every single doc, every single slide, every single sheet, everything that a student creates. And AI reads it and flags it if necessary. Gets in real time, I get a PDF, my counselor gets a PDF of email of that doc that they created. It's, it's a safety thing, okay? And so it, it's a, it leads to beautiful conversations, right, with me and the student. Like, why would you send that email? What were you thinking at the time? A lot of restorative language there, right? Um, if it's really bad, Gaggle blocks it. In other words, the recipient doesn't even receive the email, 
Okay, so that's next, gaggle. Hapara is something that I can, as an admin, all the teachers can do it, I can see every computer screen in real time, like I can literally watch them browse on their screen. I can message them, hey, it looks like you're lost. You should probably turn that screen off and go back to your IXL, right? So, and then all of a sudden they're like, you know, they're looking around for a camera and it's like, oh no, that's me. I'm like on the other side of the building and I'm messaging them like, you should probably close that tab. So, or I just decide, you know what? I'm gonna close that tab for you because I'm just, that's just me loving you well. I'm gonna close that tab for you, you look lost. So there's that as well, okay? So there's that. So we try, again, how they're wired and being wired by the screen right now, that's a real deal. I mean, that's just a real deal. It's just where students are at in 23, 24, or 25. I mean, it's just, that's just where they're at right now. Okay, next. Um, so interpersonal. So you, so friends are here, and, and the opinion of friends is up here. You and I are like down there. So like if you ranked one through 10 of level of importance, friends are one through nine, you and I are 10. That's just how it is. That's how it is. Students are not self-centered, they're self-focused. They spend a ton of energy just being them. It is an immense amount of work. And if you want evidence of that, look at your son or daughter's school photo from the fall and now look at them now. They literally are metamorphosizing right in front of your face. They don't look like the same kid. We have some students in the middle school that have grown crazy heights. Some not at all. You just don't know. My son from eighth to the end of ninth grade grew seven inches. It was awful. He, to this day, he had physical therapy today. Of, and this is 10 years ago. And he's still suffering in his knees. I mean, it is, it is not easy. It's just not easy. Okay? So those interpersonal relationships are really hard. How we try and help with that is, is we really try and manage the climate and culture. Go ahead, Brandon. So if they're your, and these are different, you're in different, you're in different spaces than each other. If this is your oldest, this is going to be a whole new experience for you. It's going to be a wild ride. You're, you might already be, already be on that ride, but it's going to be wild, okay? But we're here to join you. We'll team up and partner with you. If you've had one child come through, boy, and now you have a girl coming through, that is a totally, I have a boy and a girl, that is a totally different ride, okay? If you've had a girl come through and now you have a boy come through, it's a totally different ride, right? It is absolute proof of God's sense of humor. There's no question about it, okay? So we want to journey with you on that, right? That back and forth communication between you and the teachers, you and Mrs. Cater, you and me, this is what we're experiencing at home. Are you seeing any of that at school, right? Those types of things that we will journey together on. Next, please. So, um, yeah, so our middle school counselor. So she is, we are very invested in the, in the well-being of our students. She goes in and teaches classes on social-emotional learning, helps the kids sort of wrestle and identify uh, how they're feeling, why they're feeling that, right? They, she does a lot of that stuff. So she is in the classes. Usually it's in, it's in through the Bible classes, but she is in there teaching and giving the kids some tools and trying to be proactive in that way. Denver Seminary came in and did a study of our middle school. So they study school, uh, middle schools all over the place. And one of the questions was, um, do you feel supported, connected, and safe? So they interviewed the seventh graders. And the seventh graders, the vast majority of the students felt supported, uh, connected, and safe at school. Like if we can just keep that up, that, 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 then we, now we can learn, right? Now we can do new activities. Now we have confidence, right, if I can get that. So we really guard that. Go ahead, Brandon. Also to protect our climate and culture, 
um, we do not allow cell phones. Cell phones come in, and they have to go in what's called a tech tray. Now, do the students sneak it? Of course they do. They're 11. It's okay. We'll figure that out. If we catch them, we have a conversation, right? Um, it's not a perfect system. Uh, social media, I just, this is just my, that's a bit of a soapbox statement. So it says, social media, please don't. But if you do, please monitor, monitor it closely. When I was a student, no internet, in junior high, I went to school, fought it out if we had to do that, right? 3.30 rolls around, and I got a 15-hour break from even my best friend, right? I went home. And unless I was on their team or I picked up the phone that had that cord thing on it, you've seen it before? Yeah. Unless I called, I got a 15-hour break. Phones, our kids get no breaks from each other. 315 rolls around, bell rings. 316, they're texting. And who knows how long that continues, right? So if it continues, say, till 10 o'clock at night, and what they're often trying to do is they're trying to resolve a situation that happened in person by using texting. By the way, that doesn't work. That does not work. That's just dumping gas on the fire, right? So though, I'll be honest, those, a lot of that lands in, in my office, right? Because it's starting to impact teaching and learning, right? So just think about that and, and be curious about that. Reflect on that a little bit. But our kids, even from their very best friends, they need a break, right? They need a break. Uh, and sometimes social media and texting just doesn't allow for that to happen. All right, next. Okay, so we want to offer them leadership opportunities. So our SALT, so the sixth graders, the current sixth graders, really soon are going to start applying to be on uh, SALT. SALT is basically our student council, okay? So it's our student council, and what we do is we want as many students to have an opportunity to lead as possible. So it changes at the, sem at the semester. So you have about 15 students in the fall that have applied and have been accepted, and then we do it all over again for the, for the spring semester to hopefully get about 30 students in it. Okay? They plan events. In fact, they met today in my office. I always know they meet because Tara brings in Chick-fil-A, and my office smells like Chick-fil-A for, for the next couple hours. Um, so they plan events, they learn leadership skills, uh, they, again, they plan events, they host, they'll be at the new student orientation, so they lead all my tours and orientation stuff uh, in August when the sixth graders arrive, so they help, they help run all of that. So it's a really neat opportunity. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. All right, so I'm going to kind of breeze through this rather quickly because I've sort of interjected it through some other stuff. So we want, um, we want your child to develop healthy relationships, not the same friendships over and over, because again, you need that break, but you need to be allowed to grow and change as a human. And growing and changing as a human means that maybe I have different interests than I did last year, and maybe that friend and I just don't have something in common as like we used to, which is okay. But again, you, these, they need space to change. They need space to develop. And so we encourage those friendships. So one of the ways that we do that is they'll have a homeroom, but then every other class is totally randomized. So hopefully, it's not a perfect system, but hopefully of the 92 sixth graders, they'll hopefully be in one class with most of those. Sometimes they'll end up with two or three, right, classes just because of the math of it all. But we want them to be in classes with different students, right, each hour, so that they have an opportunity to meet, meet different kids. So that's really important to us. Go ahead. Um, so one thing we do is when the relationships fall apart, and they do, it's okay. Our kids say mean things and, and do mean things. It's just they're trying to figure out their place in the world, and sometimes it's messy. We have restorative conversations, so we sit down. Sometimes it's me and the student. Sometimes it's Mrs. Cater. Sometimes it's student and student. And we try and restore what was broken. 
by an act or a word or both. So we really try and restore that because we believe that God created us to be in this community together. So let's figure this out together. So we spend a ton of energy um, on that. Okay? You can tell recess gets a lot of run in my world. So recess is, it, uh, it's, it probably to the naked eye looks like Lord of the Flies, but it's not. It's actually moderately organized. And the students are, they're in charge. It's their rules. They, they'll say they're playing basketball. They're not. There's a rim and a basketball, but that is not basketball. But they're having a great time, which is fine. It's great. What do I care? Right? It's their rules. Right? They foul each other. And, I mean, it's crazy. Um, or they make up games and they run around on the playground and they make up all these games where they chase each other and they chase each other all over. As long as they're running like crazy for like 25 minutes, man, I'm good. I don't care about that. That's great. Some students at recess, they sit under the playground and they just talk. They just talk. They just hang out. They laugh. Some play four square. By the way, it's not four square. It's in the four square place. It's with a four square ball, but that is not four square. But it's still really fun. It's still really fun, and it's their game. They're in charge, right? And so, again, uh, snowballs, snowball fights, it's amazing, right? Today was kind of interesting. They kind of floated into grade levels. And I have to talk to some of the eighth graders because they have, like, cannons for arms. I'm like, dude, chill. You're not out to prove anything. Relax. So we have to have – but then that's a beautiful conversation. You're an eighth grader. What, this kid is four feet tall. You can't do that, right? And so I have that conversation. What do I build in that kid in the middle of a snowball fight? Empathy. Without him even knowing, we just build empathy, right? And he doesn't even know it. It's, a, it's amazing, right? Or a kid comes up, I got hit in the face. You're in the middle of a 100-person snowball fight. You signed up for that. I didn't tell you to go down there. I know, but it hurts. I believe that. I believe it. Don't go down there, right? I mean, so, uh, I mean, that's just, I'm sorry. But again, it's a great conversation. Was it fun? Yeah, it was so much fun. Okay, then we're good, right? So there's a lot of that at recess and that you just can't replicate anywhere else. You just can't. It's great. All right, so communication. So I send out every Monday morning. This is our last one, I think. Every Monday morning, I send out a Monday morning message. It's about 10 minutes long. Half of it is kind of the upcoming week and calendar um, events. Uh, I talk about the auction from time to time. I'll talk about um, summer camps. I'll talk about if a club starting up, our orchestra club, robotics club, things like that. I'll talk about those. And then the second half is um, what I learned in church on Sunday. That's kind of a devo. So I take, first half is informative. Second half, I sit there and take notes in church. And then I just share what I learned. Right now we're going through Judah. By the way, that's, that's a hidden gem. It'll take you like 20 minutes to read. It's two and a half pages. In my Bible, it might be longer in yours. It's, it's a gem. There's a lot of good middle school stuff in that. Because Judah is a, he's a piece of work. He's a piece of work. Um, but God uses them anyway, right? It's, it's really good. So I'm learning a lot. Um, and then I'm part of a cohort at church. So we meet with our pastor a couple times a month, and he kind of gives us what he's going to talk about in his upcoming sermons. And then we kind of feed into that. And I give the middle school student perspective because he knows that that's what I do with his sermons. So we kind of talk about that. It's really cool. So anyway, so that's that. So that is on Monday morning, and the students see it in homeroom that day. Next. Okay, so that's how you get a hold of me. Um, oh, it's turned blue. It's just tamadon at denverchristian.org. Um, that's my number. If you, uh, you can ask questions when we're done here, which is, this is the last one. Uh, or if you want to sign up, uh, just email me. Uh, and I'll probably put you in touch with my assistant, uh, Mrs. Nielsen, and then we can find a time for a cup of coffee. So down in the Thundergrounds, I'd, I'd love to meet with you and chat with you and answer any specific questions that you might have. All right? 
I think that's it. Right, Brandon? The last slide. Wondering. That's a fancy word for questions. It just it sounds like really profound. Any wonderings, questions? Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's actually really, the question is: Can parents get Hapara? Okay. Little known secret: Hapara works on and off campus. The filtering. So, um, so any filters and websites that I block here, they could be browsing on the moon, and it's still blocked. Can you see their screen in real time? No, because I know that'd be sweet. Um, but yeah, that would be even sweeter. But uh, yeah, but the filtering still works. So like, there's a few websites that I block, drives kids crazy, but it, it helps them focus mostly. Yes. Great question. Is foot? The question is: Is football flag or tackle? The last couple of years, it has been all flag. We are currently exploring tackle uh, for the older students, probably seventh and eighth. Sixth will remain flag. Okay, um, but yes, seventh and eighth, uh, we're exploring the opportunity to maybe introduce tackle to to them still leaving the option for flag for those students. Because we had so, we had like 50, 55 or so football players. And when Mike talks about our percentage of enrollment, it's insane. Like everybody plays a sport. And I'll talk about that in a second. Does that answer your question? Okay, so let me piggyback on that. I say, in, and I've done new family interviews with, with many of you in here, pick a sport in the fall. Make your child pick a sport in the fall. It is an immediate connection outside the classroom. I've never played volleyball before. You know what? Most sixth graders have not. Most sixth graders have not. Very few. It's not like club soccer. Very few students have played club volleyball growing up, and it's pretty much new for them all. Okay? Cross country, you think, my kid doesn't even want to run from here to the fridge and back. They would never want to do cross country. But you never know. It's super camarader. There's a ton of camaraderie. You're on the bus together. And by the way, that's a trip because that's kind of a new experience too. And I've driven that bus. Man, it is, it's like Mrs. Frizzle's bus. It is crazy. But it's really fun. And it's all new for them. And they're laughing, they're giggling, and they're in their uniforms. They are so adorable. So get them into a sport. I've never done soccer before. Nobody cares. Just go play. Okay? So if you're, so my, so my daughter, soccer was kind of her gig, like really, really good. It was an amazing opportunity for her to learn empathy playing with her classmates who had never played soccer before. She had to figure that out because on club, I pass the ball and it like comes right back. Here, that's not necessarily true. It might go and then just keep going. And that's okay. That's, that's, that is okay. They learn empathy and patience, right? And then all of a sudden, that student is now... Four, four weeks into practice, now they're able to pass it back. That's a, that is a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. Okay? Um, and then cheerleading, of course. Cheerleading's blown up. That was like tons of kids doing cheerleading. It was super cool. Um, but highly encouraged sports. Pick one. Okay? Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, it depends on the sport. Um, basketball, typically they stay at their grade level. Typically they stay at their grade level um, because of sheer numbers in some cases. So, like, seventh grade is full, right? And so there wouldn't be necessarily room for a sixth grader. Yeah. One more question. Yes. Yeah, good question. Um, are there tryouts? We don't cut, but we do have limited space, right? So basketball is tiered. We have a blue and a white team. So these are your better players. These are your brand new to the sport players, or your right? You're not as strong players. Um, all the other sports are pretty much broken out by grade level. Just depends on numbers. Yeah, yeah. All right. 
if you have a question, I'm going to let you go. If you have other questions and you want to have a cup of coffee with me, that'd be great. You have my email. If not, I'll be up there too. Cool? All right. Yeah.